murakoze cyane amakuru <laughs> muraho <laughs> honing my uh, kenya rwanda skills uh, honorable uh, minister sabin sanazimana uh, members of the press uh, dear colleagues and friends it's an honor to be back in rwanda and i thank the minister for his hospitality and for his leadership in the response to the outbreak of Marburg virus disease. Last night, I also had the opportunity to meet with His Excellency President Kagame. And it's clear that he's closely engaged in the response to the outbreak. Leadership from the highest levels of government is essential in any outbreak response. And that's what we see here in Rwanda. And thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership. And thank you, Mr. Minister. We're pleased to see that there have been no new cases in the past six days. And we hope that remains the case. Yesterday, we visited the treatment center where there are still a few patients receiving treatment. Although most are now negative for Marburg and we expect them to be discharged shortly. We were impressed with the level of critical care for patients, which has not been used before in an outbreak of a viral hemorrhagic fever in our continent. Two of the patients we met had experienced all of the symptoms of Marburg, including multiple organ failure, but they were put on life support. They were successfully intubated and extubated and are now recovering. We believe this is the first time patients with Marburg virus have been extubated in Africa. These patients would have died in previous outbreaks. This reflects the work Rwanda has done over many years to strengthen its health system, to develop capacities for critical care and life support that can be deployed both in regular hospital care and in emergencies. And I have heard this not only from local doctors, but also from foreign nationals who are serving in the treatment center and other facilities in Rwanda. They're very happy by what the standard of level is being in, in Rwanda. Although there are no approved vaccines or therapeutics for Marburg, we congratulate Rwanda for the speed with which it initiated trials of both vaccines and therapeutics. And we hope that these trials will help to generate the data to support approval of these products for future outbreaks. This also demonstrates the work Rwanda has done to strengthen its regulatory system, which has been working towards reaching WHO maturity level three. And we hope the agency may reach the maturity level three before the end of this year. And I thank the many partners who have supported these trials, including the Sabin Vaccine Institute and the University of Oxford. And I'm glad that the CEO of the Sabin Institute, Amy Finan, is able to join us today. Thank you, Madam. And as you know, we have two other candidate vaccines in the pipeline. I think three, actually, from the Oxford University from public health vaccines and IAVI. And I'm really glad that tropical diseases like Marburg, Marburg virus, which is dangerous, is getting the attention and we have vaccines in the pipeline. Yesterday, we also visited the National Command Center and we were impressed with the way technology is being used to provide real-time information for action and enhance operational efficiency. 
as borrowing the words of President Kagame, I saw smart Rwanda in action. And we also visited the BioNTech vaccine manufacturing facility. And I was here in Kigali for the groundbreaking ceremony two years ago. So I was very pleased to see the significant progress in construction. One of the key lessons of the COVID-19 pandemic was the need to expand local production of vaccines to avoid inequitable access to vaccines that we saw. And we're pleased to see the way Rwanda and BioNTech are investing in local production. And you know how Africa was treated when the vaccines arrive. The vaccine inequity and vaccine nationalism. And we hope this strategic investment will address the equity problems we faced in COVID-19. So, as I said, we're very pleased that there have been no new cases and deaths in the past six days. And I can see that the outbreak is being managed under strong leadership. But we're dealing with one of the world's most dangerous viruses and continued vigilance is essential. Enhanced surveillance, contact tracing and infection prevention and control measures must continue at scale until the outbreak is declared over. WHO will continue to support the government in the response. Together with our partners, we have provided technical experts, personal protective equipment, test kits, and other supplies. And I thank especially the United States, the European Union, and the United Kingdom for the funding they have provided to WHO and other partners. And I salute the dedicated health workers who have put themselves in harm's way to save their colleagues and who have continued to work despite the risks. And I honor the memory of those we have lost. I would also like to reiterate that based on a risk assessment, WHO advises against restrictions on travel or thread because they are unnecessary and can harm Rwanda's economy. Except harm, it doesn't bring anything. I mean the travel, trade and restrictions. I cannot really emphasize enough, especially this point. Of course, most countries have respected that advice, but some have imposed travel restrictions. And we ask those countries to reverse those restrictions. Honorable Minister, thank you once again for your leadership. And I assure you of WHO's complete commitment to supporting you in any way we can. Murakoze Chane.